This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Southern Magnolia Smiles, a locally owned and operated dental office right here on Washington Avenue in Ocean Springs. Dr. Robbie Williams and his friendly staff have a number of different customizable treatment options and provide a comfortable environment just for you. Check them out at their website, southernmagnoliasmiles.com, or find them on Facebook and Instagram. Now let's jump into the episode. What's up, everybody? It's the Brownwater Banter Podcast. I am Jared Seymour. I'm Joey Cates. <laughs> As he takes a sip of the drink. Um, and we're here today, man. we got a good podcast lined up for you. We're here with uh, Marcus from Saltwater Therapy Charters. Saltwater Therapy Custom Charters. Oh, I always miss custom. that one key custom. keyword in every one yes. that we do. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff today, man. We're going to talk about charter boats, uh, how we got in charter boat business, uh, spear fishing, which is one I can't wait to get into. Yep. Uh, you are a part of, how, how do I say that, part of the Deep Water Mafia? You yes. Uh, started it, or how, how does that work? No, there was nine original members that started it and then after you know once they got everything situated they opened it up for anybody to join right and i was in the first round of people that joined the club once they opened it up for membership okay okay yeah i've seen i've seen y'all online before uh, i guess i got a facebook group or facebook page or whatever right it's a pretty big presence online and yeah. uh some pretty some pretty killer uh photos and stuff on the page so i, I want to talk about that First things first, um, we got a cup here that was sent in by, what do you say, Joey? Just, uh, Just Peachy Creations. Just Peachy Creations. They made yeah. this for us, man. We've shared their link on our uh, Facebook page before. Um, we can drop it in the comments below on this. But, they, man, they sent this in to us, and it's a super cool cup. We really appreciate it. We're going to yep. let it hang out right over here. If, uh, if y'all are into some kind of cups or whatever for, for yourself or for your business, man, hit them up on Facebook and uh, see if they can make something for you. And we're sipping on a little bit of Buffalo Trace uh, whiskey today, a little bit of bourbon, and it's, uh, it's very cold and very good. But so so tell tell me first how you got into uh, the charter boat business. I've been around the water my whole life. Um, back, I think about when I was 10 years old, I started working on my great uncle's boat. Mm -hmm. During the summers, I'd get out of school, shrimping, crabbing, you know, that's all I've ever done. You know, when I was younger, I was on the water doing something. And I'm still that way. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I just, that's where I'm happiest is on the water. Without a doubt. And Without you a fish doubt. a bunch. Yeah. You fish a lot. Yeah. <laughs> now, where you are you from? Where are you? Latimer, Van Cleef? Where are you actually um, from? I grew up in the St. Martin area. St. Martin area? Yeah, that's okay. right. So you're a yellow jacket, too? Oh, Stingham. yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've been saying yeah, on the podcast. all the time. <laughs> uh, so, grew up on the water. But, I mean, what made you want to make that transition over into you know, a business? Like, making it a well, business, you know? Um, so, I'm a firefighter. So, I work one day on and I'm off for two days. Right. And I was spending so much time over the years on my two days off on the water fishing day in day out and it's just something that's always you know been appealing to me so i told my wife i said you know i'm gonna go i'm gonna start doing it yeah and yeah. um that was five years ago so i'm going into my sixth year now damn damn yeah you and, figure if you're gonna be out there spending money on it doing yeah. it anyway why not maybe make, make a, little a little revenue little. off of it huh yeah. yeah yeah we that's kind of the common theme we've had a few charter boat captains come in and talk to us so far up to this point and that's what most of them say they're like man i'm out there doing it anyway why don't i just you know, you start a well business and bring some, bring some clients out there with me. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, fishing by yourself and with buddies, you know, it's fun. But to me, you know, I get my enjoyment out of it, watching people that have never been down here, never been on the coast, never been on salt water. Right. Yeah. You know, stuff that we take for granted, they just go absolutely crazy over. Right. Um, and one of the top things that I can think of is during the summer, they don't have any bait at the bait shop, so we'll go catch up with one of the bait boats. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just, you know, them watching them pick the net up, um, <laughs> the dolphins around yeah. the boat, you know, stuff that we just look at and go on by, you know, they, they like love Like a little it. seafood tour right yeah. there in your, in your charter boat. Well, yeah. we, we got one of those, right? There's yeah. a live bait boat, I believe, that I, you see them right here behind the Beau Rivage all the time taking people on tours yeah. or yeah. whatever. And little, I think they pull a, a, a small uh, shrimp net, you know? Yeah, it's a, yeah. a shrimp and tour is what yeah. it is. Yeah, okay. And they, uh, they catch bait and they catch shrimp or whatever, and, and people get to see that. But you're right. We kind of take that for granted growing up, living around here. You know, people don't always get to be exposed to that. Yeah, yeah. So seeing, uh, taking these people out, I guess, and seeing them realize that for the first time, that's that is pretty cool. You yeah. get to see where it all comes from, full circle. I yeah, mean, all the way from right. start to finish. Is it? Uh, was it a rough transition that first? You know, first couple clients or first couple months? No, no you, people I, already I, knew who you were. Yeah. Well, sort of. I mean, it's just I've deck handed on a couple of the bigger charter boats, so you know that aspect of it you know dealing with clients you know i was used to um oh. it just you know, smooth smooth transition yeah right, right, right into it rolled yeah. right into it yeah i'll ask confident i like that um 
So what in the in the timeline of events? How did the the Deepwater Mafia thing come about? Was you already a charter boat captain, or did you? No, uh, not when that started. Um, I let me think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got started diving, you know, about ten years ago. Um, good buddy of mine was an instructor. Okay, and he was going every weekend, you know, certifying people, spearfishing, all that. So I was like, man, I got to get in on that. Yeah. yeah. So I got, I got, he certified me, and not long after, um, he got hurt, and he's no longer able to dive. Damn. So um, I sort of fell out of it for a couple of years. Just didn't have anybody to go with. Right. Right. And um, that's when you know I started seeing this deep water mafia pop up everywhere yeah. you know spear fishing videos pictures we're seeing them at the um fishing banks meetings mm-hmm. so you know just got to talking to them and then you know whenever they opened it up for membership i was you know right there in front of the line you said one of the first nine is that what you said like that early no there was nine original members okay and when they opened it up i was in the first group got gotcha. you know, to join That's gotcha cool. um but it that that nine actually came together at the croaker classic uh, yeah. Very few of them knew each other, and then when Marty put that tournament on the first time and opened it up for spear and lionfish, yeah, that's where all these guys met. Okay, and it just you know created it, it, it blew it, up from there. It, it blew up from there. So so th- so that must mean that the deep water mafia is not that old then, right? Because the no, Cro- Cro- Croaker Cro- Classic hasn't been going on that long. Yeah, right? the the club's only five or six years old now okay really man yeah. time flies I they got a that. huge the they got a though. huge facebook following yeah. now already yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean and we're you know our club differs a little bit from some of the other clubs like say in louisiana alabama you know those are strictly spearfishing clubs right. you know if you're going to be in that club you're going to spearfish you're going to compete mm-hmm. um our club is more of a dive and social club so we accept, you know, you don't have to be a spear fisherman if you just like diving and taking pictures. You know, if oh, you're wow. just a, you know, yeah. a, a reef diver, you know, a plain recreational diver that doesn't, you know, shoot, shoot fish. fish. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, we take people, you know, that do anything. As long as you're a certified diver, you can join the Deepwater Mafia. Is there is it a registration fee and, and like your yeah, membership and stuff like that? It's seventy five dollars a year, okay. and that pays. Really, all that pays for is our Christmas party at the end of the year. I've been down with that already. And I mean, yeah, already in it. I'm do, not a certified diver yet, but uh, <laughs> we do a huge party every year. Yeah, I like the social aspect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean that's that's the best part of it. You know, we talk. You know, you get on different people's boats. Yeah, you know, learn diving with different people, and it's just it's a real yeah. good time. Is it uh? It, what's like? I've fished, you know, growing up here my whole life, but what's it like? You know, that's a whole different world down there, right? It is. Like, that's a different transition. It's the, there's the rules are different down there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're on their turf, yeah. right? You get in the ring with them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You get in the ring <laughs> yeah. with them. Every time I think about doing something like that, I think of that video that I've seen before on the internet where it's like the diver, and obviously he's got a webcam on of some kind. Or, uh, um, a GoPro. GoPro, yeah, and yeah. he looks down, and you can't see anything, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's a shark that comes <laughs> up, and he shoots it right in the mouth yeah. right yeah. before it bites him. Like, that's all I think I would you think about. You have to change it. your wetsuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd look like one of those, uh, what is it, the octopus that shoots yeah. the ink out? He said it wouldn't be. It, wouldn't be it, it happens. We we deal with sharks pretty regular. Yeah. yeah. But a lot I mean, of the guys I talk to say they don't, they're really not interested in you, though. They're Most, most of, the of the time, time, they're not. Yeah. Um, there's this one particular place that we go dive. It's a cutoff rig, and we know when we hit the water, by the time we make it 30 foot down, mm-hmm. a bull shark's going to swim up to us, and he oh. will he will Ooh. follow us the whole dive, you know, 10 feet away from us. Just looking at you. Yeah, he'll just he'll just cruise around next to us. We can shoot fish in front of him, and he don't it don't bother him. He just comes out, checks us up. He's like wow. a like and a friendly, friendly yeah. golden retriever of that yeah. of that, yeah. re, of so that he rig. could bite rig. you in half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, then there's some places that we go to uh mainly over towards alabama and pensacola that um they they'll run you off the wreck um they'll get pretty aggressive wow Man. and it's it normally when that happens there's one guy in our club that it's going to happen to um he's just a shark <laughs> magnet shark bait. that yeah. would be me 100 <laughs> um, percent. that would be me but yeah he's he's got more fighting off shark stories than what do they do they just kind of inch a little too close for comfort or you how yeah you, they'll they'll come darting in at you real fast uh-uh. and then turn at the last second you have nope. to poke them with your spear gun <laughs> nope uh, yeah. i want to do it man and i, I think in my mind yeah. i'm going to try it eventually someday but it's one or two of those and i probably one of those and i'll be like appreciate it guys i'm gonna pay my dues and i'll see y'all at the christmas party <laughs> yeah it, i mean i don't personally i don't see a whole lot of sharks right um 
you know, I dive just as much as some of the other guys in the club. And, you know, I'll catch a glimpse of one here and there, but right, I've very rarely have I had, you know, encounters with aggressive sharks. Well, That's outside cool. of the shark conversation, what's it like when you're down there? Like, is it, are you chasing it's, these fish? Are you sitting and waiting? I mean, are you stalking them? How, how does it? It's, it all depends on the fish. Okay. Um, certain times of the year you know when they get a lot of pressure they get skittish mm -hmm. and then you know you'll be sort of hiding behind the rig leg kind of ambush you know, style yeah, trying to you know catch one coming around the corner mm -hmm. um and then certain fish take african pompano for example they right. are notorious where if you look at that fish he, he's, gonna he's, go. he's gone right really? so when you know we'll be at a rig and you know there's a school of them you'll have to sort of swim off the rig and swim parallel to them and hold your gun sideways and then just you know watching them out the corner of your eye and then just at that last second when they're close enough just sort of turn and right take a shot what's uh, it what's the distance on a spear spear gun like that accurate and to get the penetration you know i try not to shoot more than about 15 feet that's, that's pretty close. close to be to yeah. them right yeah. yeah um you know a lot of times we're shooting amberjack yeah i mean you're dang near putting the spear right against their head before you pull the trigger um, wow. they swim right up to you sniper sometimes on the wrecks you know if we're shooting we're not shooting sniper we're looking for something else and sniper thick you're just about pushing them out of the way with your hands really yeah so I mean, endangered species how yeah. can that happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, right yeah yeah but um, i mean you would think especially with a big amberjack or something like that you want to be shot and dead right unless you're you're going on the oh, sleigh yeah. ride yeah they they will definitely take you for a ride and beat your ass yeah I, really. out. yeah because how does that work once the spear hits them it's connected to you by there, there's no rod and reel mechanism right no yeah, uh, well just, not on our gun free diving their guns do have reels on them okay but scuba diving there's two main ways either your line's connected straight to your gun and you just hold your gun okay or i use what's called a riding rig which is pretty much a piece of rope that I hold on to. And when I shoot, my cable is attached to that rope. So everything comes unattached from my gun, and I got my gun clipped off, and I just let it go, and it'll sink and gotcha. float beside me. That's and a safety I, thing there, yeah. right? And then I fight the fish with the rope. And, you know, if um, one starts to get the best of you, starts dragging you too deep, something happens, you just let go of your rope, and, you know, you just lose a shaft. You're not out right. of a four or $500 gun. Or your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. Too. Yeah. So you just hold on to the rope and then make your way to the surface, correct? Yeah. And then you just pull the fish to you and then throw yeah. them on the boat like that. Does yeah. that happen a, a few times to you that you had to, you couldn't get, get one in like um, that? I'm, I, I'm I assuming can, you're shooting to kill too, right? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah I mean, you're shooting. Right, that they don't fight much to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Um, I can think of twice that I've had to let go. Right. Um, once it was just i don't know what happened it was a bad shot right it was a body shot on about a 65 70 pound amberjack mm. and i was already at 150 feet when i shot him and he started dragging me down about 180 i just let him go yeah um the second time i think it was another bad shot or i don't remember what happened but as soon as i pulled the trigger he come tight on the line and it just snatched the rope out of my hand gotcha wow. um but i have had one amberjack tie me up um we was on a wreck and 90 foot of water or so and um it was a smaller amberjack and really those they're so much faster um before i could think about it he wrapped the cable around my leg i reached down to grab the cable he made another wrap tied oh, my hand wow. to my leg Holy so, <laughs> so i'm sitting there i was I like know, dude I don't know. I mean, it's just I one like of the things cold beer just sitting yeah. in the chair. you gotta <laughs> you know saying? just just keep calm you know i look, yeah. right. I look panic probably the worst yeah, panic panic's the worst thing you can do underwater yeah and uh so i you know i looked up towards the front of the wreck and i see my buddy so i start swimming towards him one leg and i get there he's fighting a amberjack so i'm like damn so i sit there i was like i was at on top of the wreck so i was about 65 70 foot i was like well i can either go up to the top and you know sort it out on the boat or i can just drop to the bottom and you know take care of it that's true so i just let all the air out of my bc dropped to the bottom got a knife in the fish's head untangled everything yeah put him on my stringer and went back yeah. to hunting you fish. ramboed him huh yeah. got him with a knife yeah what, what's your favorite species to to spearfish is there is and is there a lot of difference in it um from somebody who's never done it i don't know my favorite is probably mangrove okay i love mangrove snapper yeah to and, eat or to, yeah, or to eat right right yeah. but i mean and then you know 
for shooting big fish, my favorite would be amberjack. Um, okay. I mean, it's just you love doing it all. Yeah. Once you start, you know, there's different aspects to hunting different kind of fish. Right. And, um, you know, there's something that I just love about every one of them. Okay. How can, finicky are those mangroves? Like, when you know you fish for them, you got to be, you know. They're, they're pretty, you know, they're skittish. fast. Yeah. Fast. You know, they're not going to sit there and look at you like a red snapper will. Um, you know, most of the mangroves are in the top 20 foot right. on a rig. Hanging out by so, the rig leg. Yeah, so you can sit there for an hour, you know, at 20 foot on a tank of air or longer. And um, it's just in and get, out, getting in your and shot out, right, yeah. you know, as they're darting around. That's cool. The, I yeah. guess that gives you a different perspective when you're in the boat fishing for them too, yeah. right? Because now you've seen them. I mean, the only picture in my mind that I've got is going to the Aquarium of, uh, of America's over New, over New Orleans. They have that saltwater, that big saltwater tank yeah. with the yeah. fake rig. rig legs, yeah, in it. And yeah. you do, I remember, you know, sitting there watching like, oh, that's what the – that's what they're doing like the whole yeah. time and of course i'm sure they act a little different than they would in the wild in that right in that environment but it's it is cool to see so i don't know you've talked about getting certified to dive for yeah, sure right um uh, my daughter you have a daughter as well mm -hmm. right my daughter's uh 10 i Mine's think eight. that's the, the the youngest you can get certified as a diver's 10 years old yeah okay we're gonna do that next year is that what do y'all accept kids into the dive yeah. club yeah we have there's so all of our members you know kids are they don't have to pay entry fee they're automatically right. in the club um but there are several kids that dive and shoot shoot fish. That's shoot, awesome. Shoot nice fish. Um, yeah, we're we, as soon as she turns ten, we're going. Yeah, we, yeah, well, we I'm almost we'll did it Jayden a now. long time ago. Remember, we got all the stuff together and oh, I remember took the test and then didn't do it. Seven, I my mom got it for me for uh, some kind of birthday or Christmas or something at the dive shop, and I just I was in school at the time yeah. and never had time to go do it. But I so that's. How many years ago was that? I don't even want to know the answer. 2007. <laughs> Bunch. A lot of years ago. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. It just flies by. But um, I, I, I'd love to try it. Uh, but I guess um, uh, shameless plug here. We're putting on a tournament uh, March Correct. the 21st, yes. the Sheep's Head Showdown oh, yeah. at the Biloxi Blind Tiger. And it, coincidentally, we have a spearfish division. I don't know how that worked out like that. <laughs> Weird. Um, but we're going to have uh, you know single biggest fit, uh, a completely separate spearfish only division, right? For anybody out there who's in the deep water mafia who hasn't already signed up or heard about yeah. it, uh, a completely you 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 guys are in your own division, right? Uh, biggest single biggest fish on the sheep's head. Sheep head. And single biggest trigger fish. Trigger fish. And the way yeah. we're doing it, you got to enter in the sheep's head. Uh, um, category uh and then if you want to add on a kicker is that what we're doing yeah. a separate division you can you can pay a little extra and do the the trigger fish trigger is that right fish, said yeah. that right all yep. right good yeah. but that's uh, it's to, you may not have meant it that way but it sounded like to me that you were meaning it just for deep water mafia members no yeah, for everybody it's, anybody. it's open, yeah. oh, it's yeah, open yeah, yeah. for everybody yeah, no the more yeah. the merrier yeah, right <laughs> Bring it all on. Uh, <laughs> if you want to snorkel is that allowed i don't know how yes yeah, sure <laughs> yeah, as right. long as you shoot that's yeah, right okay. <laughs> Well, getting back getting back to your charter, what do you mostly run inshore charters? Yeah, inshore okay. and islands. And you run what what boat do you run? Uh, twenty one seventy Blazer Bay. I like those too. Yeah, I yeah, you've been on it. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's like a so flies too. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, that's so. Do you run offshore as well on snapper season? You just got to pick your days or how? Yeah, that work? Well, in that boat, I I really got to pick my days. Um, as far as running snapper charters, that's more of a if I see a good day, I'll throw the snapper rods in the truck. When I get to the boat ramp, you know, I ask the people, you know, hey, right. it's going to be nice today. A little extra money, we'll go catch snapper. And, right. Um, but um, days that I don't have charters, if it's nice, I'm out there. You know, I dive off my boat. Yeah. I'll bring, bring my wife and daughter. We'll go out, you know, catch our limit of snapper and then let daughter go play at the Have you ever done a, a dive um, charter? Is that no. is that a possibility? Can you do that? Is that it's, legal? Yeah, it's legal, but yeah. the smaller in, market maybe. In, yeah, that and the insurance and liability yeah, with it is it so be. so great. How, um, how does that work? Do you have to buy a separate policy to say to be able to market for yeah. that, or to be able to take those kind of clients? Yeah. Okay, I never um, even thought about that. Yeah. For for somebody to dive off your boat, I'd looked into it at one time for somebody else, and it would be like an extra five grand a year wow. for the insurance. Yeah. Damn. Um, yeah. Just the there's so much liability. With oh yeah. It. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. What uh, we've asked before, you, and you kind of touched on this already, but do you, you think most of your clients are out of town people? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably ninety percent of what I run is people from out of town here on vacation. And how do you think? How do you? How do they hear about you? The advertising, Google, Facebook, 
Okay. Um, just word of mouth, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot repeat of repeat customers mouth. and stuff. Yeah. Is it people like coming in to gamble and then want to go out and, and fish as well? I'm, yeah. I'm sure you talk. Obviously, y'all are talking and stuff, and they're telling you why they're they're here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Yeah, I mean, a lot, a we get a lot of people from the casinos, um, yeah. just people here on vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, there's a bunch of the um, like VRBO cottages and stuff. You know, I'll go by there periodically and drop off, you know, cards, flyers, whatever. I get a lot of people. What is that? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a VRBO. What is that? Vacation rentals. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Like Airbnb, gotcha. something like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. I know a few of those here in Ocean Springs area. I'll drop my stuff off to them and um, I get a good bit of clients from them. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Will you run out of Ocean Springs? Yeah. Do I real or where you? Most of the time, I run out of Ocean Springs Harbor. Um, in the fall, when we're not fishing out front, we're fishing yeah. more up the river and stuff. I'll launch at Diabreville. Yeah. Okay. That works. Where specifically can we catch the biggest fish? <laughs> <laughs> like what, what kind exa- of fish? Exa- speckle trout in the like, water? In the yeah, water? Yeah. Right like, there I water. love that answer. You see that in all those uh, <laughs> Facebook groups. I love when people post that. Where'd you yeah. catch it? In the water. In the water. In the water. Um, I, we talk a little bit. A lot of the guys we've had in here on. Uh, on conservation and stuff and we had the speckled truth guys in here and they talked about how they're trying to change uh people's perception of sp- talking about social media you know everybody likes to post that big spread of fish and whatever and it's right. it's great for business and stuff like that but those guys are talking about how they're trying to educate their the the their customers and and everybody online you know that it, it is a limited resource in that yeah. yep. you know it is if you catch say that big humongous speckled trout take that picture of it and release that fish back into uh into the water there and let it continue to to grow the population not that they have anything you know against harvesting fish as well because we everybody knows you we love to eat them yeah. Yeah, um, right. but i um here in the past year or so i've i've really started moving more towards trying to do that with my clients Mm -hmm. um i've been running tag and release trips for speckled trout and redfish and running them at a cheaper rate just to keep get people to release those fish really Um, and doing that also we're getting you know tagging data for um, the Gulf Coast Research Lab. Right, yeah. right. We got to um, get them Well, they do. What, you do something like if you tag and you get a book, they'll give you a shirt or something like that. Isn't yeah, that actually. It's, that's uh, it right there? Yeah, oh. this is one of my Did you do that on purpose? Shirts. No. I, oh, I, nice. I, I <laughs> no, know that's that was killer. killer. I didn't that's know killer. That was um, that's killer. But yeah, when you sign up for their program, after you turn in your first book of tags, they will give you a um, one of these shirts. Sweet. Um, local artist craig brumfield yeah, oh yeah did the artwork i tried to get him, him to come in man we're still we're working on him he's shot. Get yeah. him to come. that's all right uh, we'll, work, we'll work we gotta slow play him we yeah, gotta... but yeah when it comes to speckle trout you know people love them i love to catch them yeah. i don't i don't care to eat them really i, I i'm i'm different like that i guess okay uh, i probably haven't eaten a speckle trout in three years wow. man i eat them um, like potato chips i know it's, <laughs> you know I, I, I was cooking them the other night and I, I couldn't get them in the basket before i'd you know what i mean yeah. i couldn't keep up like, yeah. i mean i love i love catching them you know i'm when i'm fishing by myself you know it's all catch and release for speckle trout mm-hmm. um redfish too for the most part unless i'll you know bring one home to throw on the grill um what's your favorite to eat flounder yeah oh. in in shore flounders just hard are, to, that's hard to they argue are against. Hard to yeah. find these days. Uh, yeah, they they've been a little slim the past couple of years. Yeah. But uh, what like, about the blue crab? Is that st- I remember they, they used to be so plentiful. It seemed like people used to give them. I, I haven't seen that much, that many. I mean, the decrease in blue crab as I haven't floundered. Floundered yeah. definitely well, is taking. Wasn't a hit, you saying so. you wasn't catching many off your grandpa's pier? Not too long ago? Uh, it wasn't as many as last summer, but there was still a- enough. You okay. know what I'm saying? But flounder, you used to be able to ship out on Horn Island. and every, you, You'd wade fishing for trout and redfish and catch three or four flounder at least. Yeah. Now flounder are few and far between in, in, in my trips. You right, know what I'm right. Which are few and far between. That's, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll be embarrassed to like tally up exactly how many days out of the year, or the, not out of the year, the past couple of years. I've actually gone out on the water, man. It's not right. enough. You get caught up with, you know, life and work and families and stuff. But it's good to know that some people are out there doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you. I think you mentioned right before we we started uh, the started recording here. Are y'all planning on doing some type of um, tournament at some point? Yes. Um, we haven't got into the details yet. It was actually just brought up yesterday. Okay. Or yesterday evening about doing our own tournament. You know, I, I'm going to head it up. I brought it to our board to get the, you know, their approval to start moving forward mm-hmm. with um, getting it going. 
but we're looking at um next year um and it'll be about a you know a three or four day tournament and it'll be open to any scuba diver okay um, you know i know we'll probably have people from alabama we know we're going to have people from louisiana um and then everybody here in mississippi we're going to try and make it a uh, pretty big big turnout yeah yeah, yeah. We, that's you know our club we do a lot of tournaments all over you know from destin florida to grand isle um, y'all y'all compete in them as yes. a club together yes how does that work is it a team kind of thing how? yeah the the way most spearfishing tournaments work out you know you'll have your places first second and third right and then each place has point value first place is three nice. points second place is two points so third place is one win. point yeah. yeah so after you total up the total board you got your personal you know which would be a king king or queen for the ladies mm -hmm. um king spare fisherman okay then it goes to best boat so you enter your boat as well you know everybody that was on that boat you turn your fish in as being on that boat correct and then you have best club awards nice oh. so it's that's it's cool, pretty man. cool that man. is pretty we, cool we do a lot of a lot of the louisiana tournaments with the louisiana clubs and okay. um it's it's a real good time so deep water mafia is just mississippi no spearfish. it's not we we have members from florida alabama and louisiana really and i'm sure there's some you know we get a good bit of um military guys that'll come and join our club and once they join you know they stay with us you know mo yeah. no matter where they get deployed to you know they're still part of part our of club. club yeah oh, they're yeah. they're diving these places all over the world and, you know sending us videos and stuff so it's well how does that work and like if you have somebody from florida and y'all go fish down there as a team do they they're still part of y'all's team because they're registered in y'all's club yeah okay yeah, uh, I'm assuming they, you enter those tournaments as a club, right? Yeah. Like you said, there's individual payouts as well, but you also register like this is the checkbox of the of the club yeah. that I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Y'all definitely need to come back on here and talk to us once y'all get more into details about that and we can help promote it. Do have y'all even got as far yet as to figuring out what time of year you would be doing no, it? it? It'll be summer, June, July time frame. Because um, what brought it up, we went to the Louisiana Council of Underwater Dive Clubs. Um we're in that club as well mm -hmm. as a club mm -hmm. that is a sort of like a mother club for all the spear fishing clubs in Louisiana and surrounding states okay and they have a big gap in their schedule of rodeos um because I think there were four rodeos that aren't going to happen this year that have happened in the past yeah so there's a big gap in the season now and we're we're looking to make another tournament to sort of fill in some of the gap. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what we did with ours. Yeah. We, yeah. I wouldn't say there right. was a gap, but we were like, hey, there's this window here in the beginning of the year where there's not a, a lot going on. Right. Why it. not try to do something? And then we yeah. picked sheep's head just because. And say we've that's something else. You know what I mean? There's not a lot. Who's targeting those? But yeah. I'm we we were seeing a lot of pictures online of people catching them. So it's like yeah. hell. It's just be for fun, you know. Yeah. For about the past two years, we've been talking about doing just a small you know club tournament you know right. like a sheephead shootout right you right know, just for our club members i gotta and, believe uh, it is gonna be mainly mainly y'all in our spearfish yeah, division you know i'm sure there'll be a couple of outsiders but i hope so i hope yeah. um we've been talking to some of the louisiana guys trying to get them to come over and shoot it or okay shoot it at home and make it over here in time for weigh in um, yeah but uh we've been we've been pushing it pretty hard on the dive side to try yeah. and get people over here yeah that's, that's pretty right. awesome we're excited about it i'm excited to see what y'all can bring in yeah. um did we pick good fish as far as the the the, the what the trigger fish we're doing you said yeah right yeah, yeah. is that that's pretty it good it just yeah. opened up today right yeah i think trigger fish yeah, just um, opened, yeah whenever y'all started this um you know david and chris both right sent me a message yeah, says, he, hey man it. look <laughs> so he was <laughs> we he did was, our, we did market research right. before yeah we you know they they bounced a bunch of ideas off of me on what you know as a diver what we would like to see and mm -hmm. you know that's you know sheephead of course we love shooting those and then um really there's not a whole lot of other open right now right or in that time and uh you know mangroves are hit and miss you know they're not really a whole lot of them around this might be a dumb question does does the seasons for these fish change per spear fishing or catching them on a rod and reel no. as far as the dmr and all that's concerned no. it's all if the same. It, same if it's open it's open if okay. it's closed it's closed okay. right. size limits are the same, same. Okay. everything all right okay yeah so yeah so we sort of settled on trigger fish since it would be open and yeah know, the lion easy. fish i was we were talking about that but that's i guess more over to the florida side right they're not as big here over here yeah um yet, it's but sort re of, reading about them like they're 
a, a nuisance invasive. now. Invasive yeah, they're, species. They're invasive, yeah. 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 That's actually um there was supposed to be, you know, one of my buddies here with me today, but he bailed to uh <laughs> to actually go, yeah. yeah, they they went they're and shot lion fish yeah. today. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn him. So they they yeah. left out of Pensacola this morning and uh they said it was a beautiful morning. About lunch that wind switched and kicked yeah. up and uh-huh. they got their asses beat I coming in. I, I hate that. I really yeah. do. I hate to hear that, but it is, but that yeah, does they, it warrant a, a little bit of a chuckle. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think they said they killed like 120 lionfish this Son morning. Of them. Yeah, really. I mean, and there's piles of them down there. And that's, right? that's actually, you know, it's good that there's not that many. 125 fish. That used to be every single dive. You really? know, how, we, how big are they? Normally, uh, average, you know, eight, okay, eight, like a croaker, six eight inches, and something it, like that. You, you may not know the answer to this. Where, where are they from originally? Like, where? No, yeah, yeah. They're, but they're, they're not supposed to be here. Is that no. yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. They're There's, good eating though, from what I hear. They're delicious. Really? Yeah, but, but they're, they're messing up. They're, they're poison. To, to, no, to, they're to, venomous. To fish. Venomous. Venomous. Yeah. yeah. It's think of it just like a catfish. A catfish right. will stick you. Right. It's just a little bit worse than getting stuck by a catfish. Worse? Is all it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'll. I've had my hands swell up before. When oh, you've been stuck. hit by them? Oh, yeah. While you were spearfishing? Mm-hmm. How, While we were shooting lionfish. How does that happen? You he after you've uh, already speared him, or what, yeah. how does that work? We we use a um, a tube called a zookeeper. It's sort of like eight inch PVC pipe, and it's got a funnel in the end. Yeah. You shoot them with your pole spear, and you just shove them in the funnel, <laughs> and he. It's they, stuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, when I was pushing him in, the spear actually went through him, and he stayed in the mouth of the funnel, and nice. I just ran my hand right into that, it. That didn't feel yeah. too good, did it? Yeah, no, it hurt. Damn. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I ain't never been stuck and you, by a cat. you got to know how to clean them, too, right? There's a special way you got to clean you them. Just and fillet them like visit. anything else. Just yeah, make sure just, you don't get hit by Yeah, them. just don't get stuck. Yeah. Nice. But I've heard they're good eating. But, yeah, really back, back when, you know, this club first started, that was, you know, as the club's mission statement was – to eradicate as many lionfish as possible. Wow. Yeah. So all of our tournaments. I can see all the memes on <laughs> like Rambo. And we used to go. Metallica. And it, a, an average day would be six to 800 fish. That's crazy. I mean, if you didn't shoot 150 fish on one drive, on one dive. Per, you know, they per were, person or per boat? Per person. Jesus. I'm talking, you know, we, you know, 800 fish for the day for the boat. Right. Wow. Um, I mean, it's. That's there. crazy. The past three or four years, the numbers that we are seeing are declining. It, I mean, good. like yeah, I mean, it's it's good, but then you know, for us, right. like doing it for right, fun, right. it's bad. But it yeah. is a great thing yeah. that we're seeing less. But thing is, um, we don't know where they're going. We don't know if they're moving to deeper water where we can't get to them. Right. If the past couple cold winters have knocked them down, or or maybe what y'all are doing, or what we're doing, you know, combination of everything. Um, right, it's just one of so those things we they just, just to, get on a wreck and just destroy it right yeah, they just they, take it they over. eat anything that can fit in their mouths wow. wow i've got one at home in my aquarium and he's about four and a half five inches i come back from fishing the other day and i had four bull minnows left in my live well i went and threw them in his tank in the story five, five minutes later they're gone yeah i mean wow. just they will eat until they literally explode wow i you know like we mentioned earlier with the conservation thing but i guess if it's something like that that's not supposed to be there and it's really doing you know ha- wreaking havoc on a, on a on a habitat, mm-hmm. it is fun I guess to go out there and that's when, we, when, when they mentioned you know possibly doing those fish. I thought it was going to be cool to see you know in a in a what I'm assuming would be an environment environmentally friendly way these big stringers of hundreds and hundreds yeah. of all these live fish coming yeah. in. But they said I guess it's more towards the what, Florida side. Huh? Yeah, it's it's you know we don't have very many of them here out of Mississippi. Um, you know, we can run to the east a little bit and get a handful here right. and there. But, right. You know, the further east you go, the more you get. They like that clear water? Yeah. 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 Well, if, if people want to um, reach out to the Deepwater Mafia, is Facebook the best place to go check them out? Yeah. Okay. Do you all have uh, a website as well? Or, or Deep, do- Deepwater Mafia Spearfishing on Facebook or deepwatermafia.net. Nice. Okay. And if you're interested in joining up, you can do it at either one of those places or get, you know, get a link and go over there and, and, and register. Yep. Um, and if somebody wants to find you uh, for your charter boat service, what's the best way to reach out and get in touch with you? Um, Saltwater Therapy Custom Charters on Facebook. Saltwatertherapycustomcharters.com is my website. And my phone number is 228-861-7359. There you go. So reach out to him, man. Still book, booking. That's right. Yeah. Still booking. Book a charter. Go have some fun. I appreciate you stopping by and drinking a little uh, bourbon with us yeah, today. Yes, sir. That was fun, man. We really do appreciate it. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And until the next one, we'll see you then.